That's awesome. So w- like after you edit the video, you need to match the audio with the visual. So okay. your lips match what's saying. Oh, okay. So, so it's the cl- in sync. Yeah. So the clap helps you see where to match because there's a big spike on the audio right there. And okay. then you can match it with your hands. So that's why we did that. It's pretty cool. We've done like, I don't even know how many episodes here. And I keep from the very first one, I was like, we need to do this. So it's easier for editing. Mm. <laughs> and we haven't done it once. So this was the first one that we actually remembered. It's because of me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Danny Palm. Legend on that. But dude, we are here with Tim Bailey. Tim Fancy Pants Bailey. We <laughs> just made up your fighter nickname for you. <laughs> Can we use that for real? No. Oh, no. I, I, like so it, I like it. I was it, so excited. I like it though. I like it though. Just. Plain and simple. Yeah. Tim Bailey. <laughs> Tim Bailey. All right. No fighter nickname for Tim Bailey. But, dude, we're super excited to have you in the studio, yeah. first of all. Super excited to have you on the card. We appreciate you. Your fight back in – you fought in April for us, right, on that Bit B11 was it, was card? Was it April? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. Fought Aaron Harper. That was an awesome fight. He's back on the card, nice. too. Um, yes, I saw that. I'm excited for him. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, how – What's your relationship like with Aaron? Did you guys keep uh, in touch after the fight at all? Uh, we haven't really talked that much recently, but like right after, we were probably messaging messaging each other back and forth probably for about a week. Right Just, on. Uh, great, awesome kid. He really you know? is. Yeah. He's right. super talented. Yeah, too, man. His record is ultra deceiving. Yeah. I, and I knew he was I knew he was going to be a tough fight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, he's going to want to get this win. Yeah. And it, it, I, nothing in me wanted to take him lightly. And I found out why. I was going to say, that was <laughs> yeah. a good decision on your yeah. part to not take him lightly. Yeah. yeah. Your next fight, very similar story, man. Cam Smith is, is tough. He was fighting up at 145, but he actually weighed in at like 140 for that fight. Oh, boy. He, <laughs> so full disclosure, a little behind the scenes exclusive for you guys. Cam knew that he wanted to fight at 135, mm-hmm. but or just the way matching works. Sometimes you just don't find a fight for a guy, whatever. Yeah. He's like, okay, do you have anybody at 145? Like, I'm willing to just fight, whatever. So for the commission, if you're overweight, obviously that's a problem. You need yeah. to make weight. But also if you're too far underweight, they can also say, eh, it's not happening. I've seen this that is not fair. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like one. I don't even know if I should say it. it doesn't matter. He was like 137 when he showed up. And I was like, dude, drink water like start chugging water before you get on the scale so he did get up to like it was like 140 or 141 by the time he stepped on so the fight remained but he's a natural 35 like he's going to be much better suited for 35 which is obviously where you guys are fighting what what did you watch his fight Uh, yeah i did uh was it uh val caruso yeah yeah yeah. yeah. um a little uh seemed a little uh Cause I know we were supposed to fight. Yeah, you right. you try to you try to book that. Yep. Um, but I was literally at the airport <laughs> when I got the text message. Um, yep. But yeah, I, I watched it. Uh, there was. Uh, it seems very uh, for pressure. So mm-hmm. I'm just gonna have mm-hmm. to worry about that in some sense. But out outside of that, again, I'm not underestimating anybody. Anybody could do anything. So. Well, he was definitely aggressive, and I think yeah. if you rewatch that fight, he got. I mean. He's, it's not going to hurt his feelings. He got straight up out wrestled the entire yeah. time, but he clipped Caruso at one I point saw in that, that fight. Yeah. He definitely dropped yeah. him, stung him good. Like his striking, it did look like he had some power and some pop in his punches. Yeah. So that's that's another day. It's that's what I said. It's like Aaron Harper. Like yeah. maybe zero and one doesn't look like a good record, but dude, I think Cam's dangerous. Oh yeah, that I definitely respect that. Yeah. So that that's fun, man. It's a great matchup. When you said you were at the airport, you were going. Was were you competing in high rollers? Yeah, nice. yeah. Did a uh, uh, what was it? The uh, second uh, cops versus stoners. Right uh, on card. Right. A lot of fun. What? A lot of fun. So, big, does Big Lawn own that and run that? I believe so. I'm pretty sure he's a founder. Okay. I, I don't know like the specifics. Yeah. But, I mean, he's probably gonna be mad at me. Uh... <laughs> but. Yes, I think he's own, uh, owner, founder. All it's that. Yeah. it's both a hilarious and genius idea, right? Like yeah. that's such a funny. Yeah. I mean, weed is so prevalent in jujitsu culture yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like, why not get stoned and then grapple? Yeah, exactly. yeah. I don't so, blame him. <laughs> what were you totally sober when you? Yeah. Did? So so the cops don't smoke and nope. they. F- <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> that's super. I hilarious. promise, I'm not just saying. That. That's super but, hilarious. But it was uh, it's funny because like I've been more drunk at my parents' house than I was in Vegas. Like that, it was a fun trip. I uh, I was hosted by uh, one of my uh, old teammates and friends from college, uh, Victor LaPerry. Oh yeah. And he lives out that way, and it's just 
business. That's awesome. great. We had some fun. Like, yeah, saw a Jabberwocky show. That was nice. Nice. But uh, yeah, yeah, through him, met a lot of great people, got to train with a lot of great people. So it was nice. Yeah, we had an unfortunate experience with Victor where we we were matching him and just straight up could not get yeah. somebody to say yes, dude. Yeah. It was very frustrating. Yeah. Flyweight. Yeah. He heart. was frustrated. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> was, sure, man, yeah. because yeah, everybody wants to fight. And yeah. we went through. It would be hilarious to see the list of people we went through. Jeez. It's but, it's tough, dude. Flyweights are tough, and then you get a flyweight yeah. like him who's definitely very good with a um, very modest record because yeah. he hasn't been fighting long. Yeah. So what's the sense of a guy fighting a super dangerous guy who, if you beat him, it looks like you beat a 1-0 guy. Okay, big deal. But if you lose to him, now you look like a turd because, A, you lost, and B, you lost to a 1-0 guy. Yeah. So, like, he's in a very tough spot to match. But I think exactly. he has a fight coming up, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. Uh, out in... Uh, Utah. Yeah, that's I what I thought. Utah. Yeah. yeah. And like the thing, I don't remember the thing with him was like he wanted it so bad because that's his hometown. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but I'm sure in the future it'll work out. I was going to say April 15th, we're back at the Hollywood Casino nice. at the Meadows. So I love Maybe. that venue. It's so good. It felt right? so backyard. Oh but like, my God. Yeah. It's professional at the same time, right. but just that old school fight it's feeling. the best vibe and yeah that's what we that's say awesome too. we like monroeville too obviously because it's it's way different yeah. much bigger much more space to do we have unlimited space in monroeville at the casino we have to condense everything yeah. which kind of sucks like we can't do tables obviously it's yeah. just regular seats but like you said the environment on fight night in there gets insane it's so it was good nice. yeah it was nice you fought in monroeville though yeah. you're going to be fighting in monroeville again saturday mm-hmm. How much of the fight experience, because obviously you wrestled your whole life, wrestled in college. How much of the fight experience was a surprise to you? Like, what was different about MMA? Um, I mean, more so just with wrestling, kind of a little going into maybe nerves, I guess. But with wrestling, you mess up one week or whatever. Like, you're, there's another match next week. Mm. You know, you're fine. Like, yeah. All right, you constantly, you know... You mess up, and then you can improve. You mess up, and then you can improve. Or at least you got something to base that off on um, quickly. Whereas Mm -hmm. when you're fighting, this is MMA in general, when you're fighting, you're not going to get fights. Sure. Week to week to week to week to week, you know, unless... Unless you're (laughs) that savage. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I guess. But (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's just... So, like, the the whole waiting in between is just... I mean, obviously, you're training in, in that time, but it's just, like, you can't help but to think, like, man, if I mess up, I'm like, mm-hmm. gonna, it's going to be a while before I can prove myself again. Yeah. And that's, that's the big, biggest difference. Not so much the, the people being there and stuff like uh, the crowd, the, the lights I, that didn't really bother me a little bit. I mean, I, I felt the hype. I felt the energy, but like that didn't really, really yeah. mean anything. Yeah. Negatively at least. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I was just talking to Zack Snyder mm. and we were discussing your schedule just being ridiculous. Like your cop, obviously yeah. we just said cops versus stoners. But you train a ton. Like yeah. you also still make time for training. What is your day like? It's tough. Yeah, <laughs> it's so tough. Well, um, so right now, um, I mean, uh, this might just be law enforcement in general, but uh, we're, we're having a big manpower issue. So the biggest thing that I worry about on a day to day at work is not being mandated to work the next shift because mm. then I can't. I can't go. Like last week, it happened to me last Tuesday. I wasn't able to train Tuesday evening because I got held over to work the next shift. Right. So, um, but if all is well and we have enough people for that day, um, I wake up at about five, five o'clock, hit the snooze a couple times, <laughs> uh, start, start work at six, uh, get off around, uh, three forty five, four o'clock, got a little bit of time, come home, walk my dog, relax, play some video games. And then I'm off for training. Nice. And then I'll come home around like 9.30, 9.15 at night and, you know, hang out, do the same thing again, you know? <laughs> Rinse and repeat. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. But, but being a wrestler, you're used to the grind. Like wrestlers, I feel like, are the most likely to do exactly what you're saying. Like yeah. wrestlers are just used to going through the shit and they're okay with it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really interesting. It's just like if I can just, if I can have a decent day at work and I don't have to do too much. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like what you see on TV, mm-hmm. you know, if I don't have to, you know, run after people all day, then like I'm generally in a good mindset by the time training comes around. <laughs> have, have you been in a good foot chase? A few of them. Yeah. How's the, yeah. What's that like? What's it's, your adrenaline it's, it's like? It's different when um, 
you got a whole bunch of weight on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right, know, your, right. Your belt, your vest, all that. And so you get a little top heavy. Uh, I've fallen for it multiple times. <laughs> uh, I've gotten beaten in foot chases before. I've won foot chases before. Uh, of the times uh, when you win, it's just like a lot of times people are already like, hey, all right, I messed up. My bad. Nice. <laughs> you know? yeah, okay. Yeah, so. All right. Not every time, but for me, my my in my experiences. So, okay. Yeah. How how important is your training Muay Thai Jiu Jitsu wrestling background to being a cop? Because I always think that should be mandatory. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, the biggest thing is before you even get there, just having that like, I want to say confidence, but just knowing that all right, I'm gonna control the uh, situation to the best that I can. And you just have that underlying belief that, you know, if, okay, well, if this guy tries to strike me or yep. attack me in any I'll way or another, right. I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. It might suck, but like, I'll be fine. So like that, it, that internal knowing that you can handle yourself. Yeah. And that when, comes with everything. For sure. I think that's like, that was a really good point. I always think of it in a pure physical sense, but the mental confidence yeah. as well is very important. Because it, exactly. Cause like if you're going into a, you know, I'm, potentially hairy situation you're you're no matter what no matter what you know no matter what you don't know your heart's going to be acting all over the place and if you've never had to perform with that rush and how to control it then you know you might react a different way than having not gone through that sure so on the flip side does it help your fighting that you've been in a literal foot chase that could be very dangerous <laughs> you're like you could die in something yeah. like that straight up um, I, I've thought about it in that sense, but I, I don't really think about it like that. Okay. I mean, like I thought about it in a sense of like, and when I said, I don't think about it like that, meaning like when I'm actually in the moment, mm -hmm. it just doesn't come to mind, mm -hmm. but that maybe subconsciously, I don't know, but sure. <laughs> I feel kind of like a dick asking this question, no, go ahead. but I didn't see your second fight. Yeah. I know you, you lost a close decision apparently. Yeah, what happened in the... Can you walk me through that? Yeah. Part? Um, so at the end of it, uh, obviously, it was a split decision loss for me. Um, one judge had it 30-27 for me, and the other two had it 29-28 for my opponent. Um, the My biggest takeaway from that was I wasn't uh, active enough, I guess. Um, I walked in the same way I walked out, still pretty. You know, the only <laughs> thing that hurt was my, my instep on my right foot from kicking an elbow. That was mm -hmm. it. Like, I felt fine. Um, but I felt like I probably could have pushed the pace a little bit more. I could have thrown a little bit more. Um, but I felt like every time I did throw, I landed. Maybe I missed a couple, but, like, I felt like I was pretty accurate. Yeah. You know, even as he was coming in on me. But if that's how the judges are scoring, you know, I'm not – talk a mess or anything but if that's how they're scoring i'll accept it and i'll just get better in that sure that department were yeah. there many grappling exchanges uh yeah i defended two takedowns and i got one of my own so i mean yeah it, no. it hurt don't get yeah, me right sure. it hurt sure. i was it stung but i don't ever want to feel that again yeah you that know? one thing that was interesting about me with your fight with Aaron was I knew you had this wrestling background I knew you wrestled at Clarion my cousin Dustin Conti also oh yeah, that's your cousin that's my cousin yeah yeah <laughs> what's up Dustin <laughs> I didn't know that that's awesome yeah. that meathead <laughs> yeah. oh, <but. laughs> he's awesome yeah so he wrestled at Clarion so obviously I knew yeah. you through him as well a little bit I expected you to look like a wrestler in yeah. the cage but you didn't at all like I may not have known that you had a wrestling background yeah. just by watching the fight how have you been able to so quickly? I know you've dove into Muay Thai pretty fully at Stout, yeah. but how are you so confident to be like, yeah, I could wrestle you, but I'm not really not. That's not my mission here. Yeah, I mean, because you spend so much time on the mats and thinking like, you know, after you take somebody down or something, like, man, it'd be cool to, you know, smack them a little bit. Yeah, you know, but like you spend so much time wrestling and stuff, and then you finally learn striking, especially being taught striking, coach striking under Coach Will Morrill. Like, how do you, how do you not? How do you not want to throw it? Sure. Throw hands, throw kicks and stuff you know, like that. So, um, but actually they've been uh, on my case a little bit, not too much, but about mixing in my wrestling a little bit more. There you go. So uh, that's another thing I've been working on. When you so, say they, you mean um, Wilkins only. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he told me, yeah. 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 I, need to, I need to wrestle a little bit more. Wilkins likes wrestling a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 
Just a little bit. <laughs> Dude, how huge is Will for that whole team? Because every single stout guy I talk to is like, he's a freaking genius. Yeah, he's a... that I don't know how else to describe it, but yeah, a genius. He, uh, his, uh, his brain on striking, and not even just striking for himself, but like, I'm a five, I'm five, five, <laughs> you know, I don't have a lot. I, and he's like six and forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, he's able to just morph his knowledge into, um, a way that is suitable or uh, usable for s- different body types. Mm-hmm. And he's able to pick it apart. You know, That's so huge. like, and especially him for me, it's great. What what was your first day of striking like? I know so many wrestlers struggle to pick up on striking, but it seems like you took to it a little bit. So I uh, I actually boxed a little bit in high school. Okay. Yeah, I boxed nice. a little bit in high school. I wanted to do it a little, little bit uh, more full time, but I broke my leg uh, mm. playing football my senior year. Damn. But yeah, that was that was my first time ever striking. And then um, after that in college, uh, in the off seasons, uh, I would go to local like MMA gyms, like up at Clarion. We had Clarion MMA. I would go up there after college. I was living in Springdale, and then I was going to the Mad Factory for a little bit. That was one of my first gyms. Nice. Uh, I was actually at Pittsburgh Fight Club for a little bit too, which right is on. now the Academy. Yeah. Just for a little bit, kind of like bouncing around. Um, and then uh, my cousin Tyree told me about Stout, and then I went there like for one class. Didn't really like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's when they were on uh, Smallman Street. Yeah, and I'm like, upstairs. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, I don't like the parking situation here. I'm it was go bad. There. That yeah, was I'm bad. Like, yeah, I'm like I'm gonna go somewhere else. And then years, a couple years later, um, I took it up full time at 26, and then um, thought thinking that I'm like, okay, I'm gonna come in here. I want to fight. I'm gonna spar, get him fight in. And Will was like, no, <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to develop some skill first before you even think about sparring. See, that's good coaching. Yeah. So many yeah. places would just take a guy and like let him fight, sign him up for a fight, and they're not ready. Yeah, that's that's a recurring theme with with Stout that we've heard. Yeah, like your guys are always ready, and you guys are nine and zero with us in twenty twenty two. I don't know if you saw that clip. I did. Yeah, that's that crazy, pretty cool. dude. That's yeah. crazy. So obviously the coaching, the preparations, top tier. How much of like an actual game plan do they develop for you guys? Well. Basically, I don't want to say game plan, but basically, because we're we don't really, at least for me, we don't really game plan for one specific person. We kind of just focus on areas of our you know individual selves, me in uh, in this yeah. instance, but focus on where I went wrong in my last fight and building upon that. That makes perfect sense. So I mean, maybe you know in the future, well, definitely in the future, we'll work game plans, but. I mean, we don't really have a lot of, I mean, there's not a lot of film I can look up on uh, Cam Smith exactly. or anything like that, which is fine. Uh, so I got can, six I'm just going to focus on myself. Yeah. You know? Got six minutes of film to work with yeah. for him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it, yeah, man, it was a good fight. I definitely encourage people to go watch Cam's fight because they're probably more familiar with you being the local yeah. guy and everything. Yeah. So if you want to watch Cam, that fight's out there on 247 Live as well. Your fight with Aaron's 100% worth watching. Do yeah. you know, does footage of your second one exist? Somewhere I don't know. on YouTube I, or anything. I, I don't know. I, maybe because funny because uh, when I remember when we were fighting uh, in between rounds, I glanced up at the uh, the monitor and it was all acting up and stuff. And then uh, when I got uh, back to uh, when the fight was over and I picked up my phone, I had so many text messages from my buddy saying, "Dude, what happened?" What I did the stream crash? Blah blah oh, blah. Oh yeah. no! So I I don't I don't know. Oh, that's yeah. brutal. Yeah. yeah. So typically, I won't say 100%, but typically the way that works is like if the stream crashed, then they just lost that footage. Yeah, so, sometimes yeah. they keep a hard copy, though. Like sometimes the producers will have a hard save copy. If it was like an internet issue, sometimes you can save it on the re-upload. But yeah, if the stream that crashes. That sounds like a lot of work. It, <laughs> it is. It is. But it's worth it a yeah, lot of times. Yeah. But yeah, man, we're stoked to have you back. For yeah, real. Like, like excited. you said, we tried back in October. I think it was you couldn't get off work or something yeah, at the time. Cause, yeah, because yeah, I was already taken I think right I took that week off for yep, cops to be in vegas yeah and then yeah, which makes perfect sense. timing <laughs> when did you know you wanted to fight is uh, boxing in high school coupled with wrestling like the recipe was there even in yeah. high school um well it was around then uh it started off when i when i still lived in texas honestly a mm-hmm. little bit before then 
Um, the first UFC game came out. The first UFC game came out for Xbox and PlayStation. I forget which one. Um, yeah. And a buddy of mine on my football team down there had it, and he just gave it to me. Nice. And every the talk at the time was like Jose Aldo's like flying knee mm. and WC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, people were like, you got to go home and watch this, blah, blah, blah. And um, I remember when my buddy gave me that video game, I'm like looking for Jose Aldo. He's not in here. Uh -huh. I had no idea how yeah, any of it right, worked. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had no idea how any of that worked back then. But I'm like, all right, whatever. So um, I was playing the game. And then I'm like, oh, I'd be cool to do this. But we don't even have wrestling at this school. I mean, I'm never going to be able to do that. Oh, you didn't <laughs> wrestle in high school? No. Well, not until I moved to Moon Township. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, what year was that? Uh, 2010. Yeah. Right after that big snowstorm. What year in school were you? Oh, I was a... Uh, I was a sophomore. Yeah, I was a sophomore. Oh, you started wrestling as a sophomore and yeah. you ended up D1 collegiate? <laughs> yeah. Well, Dang. Yeah, because um, I came late uh, 2010, 10th okay. grade year, so I had already missed that wrestling season. So two years of wrestling experience, and you got... Yeah. That's impressive, man. Yeah. Did you get an offer, or did you walk no, on? No, I, I just walked on. So <laughs> what happened, my, uh, my high school wrestling coach, Scott Taylor... Um, I went up to him one day and I'm like, Hey, I, I don't want this to be it. Like I, I wanted to wrestle my whole life, you know, but none of the schools I went to had it. And the one school in the Dallas area that I went to had it, but we didn't stay. I moved around a ton when mm -hmm. I was in Texas. Mm -hmm. So it was just something that I accepted. I might not be able to do. So when I found out we might be moving up here, I was looking through um, like the sports page on moon's website and I'm looking, I see football, track, tennis, you know, all the normal yeah, stuff. Right, right. Looking, looking. Ice hockey. What? <laughs> schools Welcome have, to I, Pittsburgh. Yeah, like schools yeah. have ice hockey. I'm like, all right, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Wrestling. I'm like, yes, finally. There it is. So when, so my senior year, I was talking to my uh, head coach, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want this to be over. And he goes, all right, well, we're going to go to the uh, Clarion versus uh, West Virginia match. I'm like, all right, sweet. So where is it? He goes, it's West Virginia. And then afterwards, I know Troy Letters, who was the head coach at the time, uh, he goes, I know Troy Letters. Uh, we'll talk to him. So I'm like, all right, cool. Well, we go. Um, Clarion gets absolutely demolished by West Virginia. Wow. And I'm like, we are not talking to him. <laughs> We're not talking to Troy Letters right now. And so best believe uh, my, my uh, high school coach goes, all right, come on. It's over. The match is over. Let's go. So we're walking down. I'm all nervous and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, man, he just got blown out. He's not going to want to talk to me. And, a, you know, Coach Scott talked to Coach Letters, and he's like, hey, yeah, this is uh, one of my wrestlers. He's uh, interested in walking on to your program, blah, blah, blah. And Letters says, all right, that's fine. That's completely fine. Um, whenever you do a visit up here, just give me a call, and we'll work it out. So uh, about maybe like three or four weeks later, um, it was like psychology day uh, up at Clarion for psychology, hopeful majors, whatever. So we go up, do the whole tour. And then I'm still like, I don't want to talk to him. Yeah. There's no way he wants to talk to me. Um, but my, uh, uh, he, I still had his like number and stuff. Or what was his number? Again? I forget. But I contacted him. And I'm like, hey, we're up here. Do you still want to talk? And he said, yeah. So we went to the uh, wrestling area or the uh, gymnasium, went into the uh, office. And he treated me like I was a legitimate college recruit. Showed awesome. me all around. Uh, the cam like that part of the campus, um, the wrestling room, went back to his office, told me what would be expected on, of me if I wanted to walk on, and that was pretty much it. That's when I had the confidence to, like, okay, I can do this. That's really impressive, yeah. man. Did you grapple at all before? No. I hadn't, wow. No. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. So you just took to it. Just took to it. I mean, I wasn't, like, obviously, like, going into, like, after finding out, I made the team because that was a bit of a process too. Sure. Um, like my goals went all over the place. Like all right, I'm an all American. I'm going to you know, be a national champ. I'm going to be the first like two year high school wrestler to national champion and didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but mm -hmm. man, I, I wouldn't trade those years. How nervous were you about even making the team? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I was still, I was still trying to believe in myself, Yeah, you know, trying to believe in myself and it just, it got to a point to where I just said, whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to do what I can. Just mm -hmm. like my, uh, my grandfather always, that, that was his, uh, his saying, 
I mean, just do what you can. Yeah. And, you know, it's a great mentality, yeah, by yeah. the way. And I love that. Yeah. And like, that's, that was, that's, uh, that was my mindset then. And it's mm-hmm. my mindset now. Awesome. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. It's powerful. So you mentioned Texas, you mentioned moving a lot. Yeah. Your military family. No, no, no. Just like some, some, not trying to give you a soft story, but just some, some, uh, unfortunate events, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, mom meeting the the wrong men right and different places different shelters and stuff yeah yeah it was it was a rough journey at times but um my my grandfather was a constant there that's great my grandfather always did what he could to you know help me out help my mom out the best way he could gotcha is he in texas yeah he uh, he's since passed but yeah he was yeah yeah he was in texas got you what what brought you guys to pittsburgh Honestly, uh, at the time, uh, we were living with my aunt, and my grandmother had just passed. And uh, my mom just basically said, I can't live here anymore, blah, blah, blah. And she was looking at uh, a couple other places uh, in East Texas that were just, I'm like, I don't want to live here. I don't want to mm-hmm. live here. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day, I remember just saying to my mom, like, hey, don't we have family members in Pittsburgh? And a week later, we were on a Greyhound to Pittsburgh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it moved fast. It, it moved fast. Kudos to you for remembering that, yeah. apparently. Yeah. You might still be down in Texas. Yeah. That's wild, yeah. man. What was the, the shock like? The weather is one thing, but what was well, it like? Just It honestly was. So people don't believe it, but it, it gets cold in Texas. Yeah. It, especially depending on what part you, you are. Like maybe if you're out in El Paso, West Texas, but um, East Texas and Dal- the Dallas area, it's flat. So once it gets cold, it just that wind just cuts mm-hmm. into you and it whips, and that's mm-hmm. all you're feeling. Um, and we get ice. Mm-hmm. It'll snow every now and then, and it yeah. won't stay, but we get a lot of ice. I mean, even last year was pretty bad. Um, one of my best friends from Texas, uh, his name's Saul, uh, he came up here to visit for the first time, and uh, he talked about last year's snowstorm, and he, he goes, everybody just called it Delaska. It was so bad down there. Yeah. But um, it's but what surprised me the most up here was the terrain because mm-hmm. I'm because my grandmother was originally from here, and she always talked about how flat Texas is, and I'm like, I always thought she was joking or right. or like talking about like oh it's boring here, oh, but then right. I didn't really understand it until I moved here. I'm like, how do you put a house <laughs> on top of a house? <laughs> yeah, how do people park like this? Right, <laughs> like there's no space. Yeah, <laughs> so that that was my first like eye opener have you seen people in pittsburgh yet those houses on like a crazy hill have you seen them mowing in the summertime with like a push mower on yeah. a string yeah I, I, <laughs> that's why i never want to have to do that no no same never. but i remember so i used to work for flow sports which is based in austin yep so i used to go to austin pretty regularly and i still have some friends down there and they said last year during that snowstorm like the city shut down basically yeah. so that the big thing is that when we get snow up here, we're prepared. You know, yeah, we got exactly. PennDOT out there. We got yeah. salt. We, we take care of it. Yeah. In the south, they, like, just have to shut down. Nobody knows what to do exactly. down there. They're like, oh, we can use sand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, so many houses had their pipes burst because yeah. they're not insulated or anything. Yeah. They're not built for that. So yeah. it's just the preparation, I exactly. think, is the big difference. Yeah. And then that year, the grid, like, especially in the Dallas area, something happened with, like, the grid. Mm. And that shut down. So people weren't getting hit. It was horrible. Oh, that's bad. It was bad. But uh, people like my friends and family that are still there, everyone that I know, they made it out all right. Um, but there were some people who passed because of it. And it was a mess. So now the important question. Cowboys fan? Yes. Oh, yes. Tim, Cowboys. Tim. Stars. Cut it. <laughs> it's over. Cut it. The podcast is over. <laughs> Heck yeah. Big uh, yeah. uh, that you know honestly it's like as a Steelers fan you have to hate the Cowboys yeah. but really why Rightfully like so. it's my parents like they should hate the Cowboys yeah. but it hasn't really been a rivalry in my lifetime yeah. besides that Super Bowl 95 Super Bowl yeah. like other than that there hasn't been like a yeah. crazy Cowboys no. Steelers game um, well what, what, when was it it was my first time at an NFL game it was 2016 me uh, one of my friends uh, up here we uh, went to it and the Man, it, I I told him several times. I'm like, hey, if Dallas loses this game, this is still a good game. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Dak Prescott's and uh, Ezekiel Elliott's first year oh, in the league. It was when yeah. Zeke with the walk off. Yeah, oh, that that, <laughs> one hurt. that one hurt for sure. I'll tell you what, uh, Ben Roethlisberger's fake spike 
that that, that hurt. That the, so I sick. I thought it was over. At Everybody that point thought for it was over. Bit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think he threw it to AB. He did. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Fake man. spike to AB. What a what a play and totally ruined by <laughs> what happened next. Yeah. That was a good game. I saw somebody like a Steelers fan on Twitter post. My my favorite game ever was that game. Yeah. And they like showed a, a highlight and just cut it after the first <laughs> like like pretending that's where the game ended. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's pretty that's funny, funny. Actually, that yeah. is funny. I went to the Cowboys Steelers in maybe 2013 at okay. Hinesville. It was still Tony Romo. Yeah. And dude, it was such a good game. It was yeah. just like that, like razor close mm-hmm. to Shea Towns and the Steelers cornerback at the time got a pick six at yeah. the very end to win it. And yeah. that was like I remember that. that was one of the wildest games I've ever been to. I remember so that. So good. That's no, it's always a good game, and I think it's coming around again. I think it's going to be next year. Oh really? I think it's been. Nice. Four, I think it'll be the fourth year because it's every four years. Okay. And then they so twenty twelve, I guess, is probably when I saw it. Yeah. So, and then they trade off, but. You know, 2012, 13 season. You know how they, yeah, but it's yeah. yeah, it's every four seasons. We'll say awesome, probably. yeah, awesome. Well, I'm and excited I was just, for that. And I was just at the um, Stars Pins game on Monday. Right on. Yeah, uh, me and my girlfriend went, and Dallas lost. Was, yeah, it did depend. But it was a close game. It was. It was a close it was like game. Two one, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gino scored with like 35 seconds left. Dude, the Pens <laughs> are just. Pittsburgh fans are so spoiled, first yeah. of all. The Pens have been so good for so long, it's wild. And yeah. as I'm sure you've noticed, hockey's like a religion here yeah. as well. Yeah. Including ice hockey in, in high, high school, schools, which yeah. was a shock to me, too. Yeah. I, I wasn't raised here. Oh, yeah, where are you from? Uh, Like South Central PA, right outside Breezewood. Okay, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Right there. Super world. We didn't have wrestling at our high yeah. school either, or football. Actually, we didn't have Jeez. a football team even. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I graduated with 69 kids. Like, my Jeez. class was 69, so... Which is awesome. Yeah, which is nice. nice. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we didn't have shit. That's so cool. that's crazy. Now, like in Texas, I know um uh like the smaller so if a school's gonna have wrestling, now I haven't been there in a while, but when I was growing up, if a school's gonna have wrestling, it's gonna be in uh, one of the more populated areas like Dallas, San Antonio, mm-hmm. Austin, places like that. Um, but and then the outside you go, the more rural you'll get. And you're going to have more like the basic football, basketball, baseball, powerlifting, whatever. Um, but even smaller schools have six-man football. Whoa. Yeah. It's almost like 7 7 I don't know the specifics and how it scores, but it's at least when I was in, living in Texas, that was a big thing for those schools. Okay. They had a whole season and everything. They just couldn't like that would be in place for like a school like yours. Right. Yeah. Just six man football and full pads, everything. That's the most Texas thing ever. (laughs) We're still playing football football somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously the the Mecca of high school football and everything. And that's the problem. Like that's one thing I wish would change. And I feel like it's in the right path. But I remember when I was uh, living there, we, wanted to get uh lacrosse and wrestling mm. and admin was saying like oh yeah we're going to blah 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 and then everybody's excited about it we got a wrestling mat we got oh, a, we wow. got a little rollout mat everybody was all excited and then what ended up happening was they said they didn't have the funds for it they couldn't do it and then we got all this new like football gear and pads and all this stuff like uh, where'd that money go where'd that money where'd that go? money because i can put this together guys yeah yeah, yeah it was just it's it's a shame because like not everybody's gonna go pro or go to even uh, D three D two level right. in football. Like spread it out. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm five five. You know, like I need something for me. Yeah, I need something yeah. for me. And it's yeah, just yeah. it's sad because there's a lot of athletes that I went to school with down there who you know thought football was gonna be it and it's sure. not working out. Didn't Bo Nickel wrestle in Texas? Yeah, Allen. Okay. Yeah, and that's just outside of Dallas. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's another area where they always had. All the sports. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Would, did you know of him when you were in high school? Was no. he? I mm-hmm. didn't know if your timelines added no. up. I knew of the school because okay. Allen was already kind of known as one of those schools that's like rich. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, and gotcha. I don't know if you've ever seen their football stadium. Oh, probably looks like a, a college yeah, stadium. Uh, yeah, way better than Clarion's. <laughs> <laughs> it makes oh, Clarion looks wild. like a JV team's oh. field. Dude, Texas does not play yeah. with their high school football. No, it's no, insanity. No, there's way more, there's more sports out there, guys. <laughs> but obviously, them. you love football. Oh yeah, I do. I so, do. I'm glad the Steelers don't play the Cowboys this year. Oh, Cowboys gosh. are pretty nasty, dude. How are you feeling about I'm them? I'm feeling pretty pretty hopeful. I think who do we have next? The Jags. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, that's, I think we played the Jaguars next. He so. did just sign T. Y. Hilton. They yeah, did. we did. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. That's another pickup, which is great because now we can stop talking about OBJ. I've been so, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I've been so annoyed with the whole. Oh, are they gonna get him? Oh, he's talking. They're, they're talking. Dak wants him. I'm like, hey, if we're gonna stop teasing me, you know. Yeah. So like, yeah. I feel like signing T. Y. Hilton just closes the door on that for sure. It's over. I don't want to hear anything about OBJ anymore. Like, dude. T.Y. in his prime was filthy. Yes. He's going yes. to be one of those underrated guys. He he was underrated when he was very good. I agree. For sure. I agree. And OBJ, I mean, obviously he's a bigger name. Yeah. He had phenomenal start to his career, but really didn't do much after that. Yeah. And also, I don't kink shame anybody, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> if you like girls shitting on your chest, uh, like you got to be ready for those jokes, yeah, dude. OBJ. Yeah. When that uh, leaked, I was like, oh my I'm God. And it's probably not true, but I'm believing that it's true. Yeah, and that's I, next. Level. I guess if uh, you know you're at that level, and you know you can have anything you want, <laughs> maybe it gets old after a while. The, the regular stuff gets old, and you just what could possibly <laughs> spice this up, honey? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's off. You can't knock it till you try it, dude. Fair, <laughs> you know what? Totally fair point. I immediately take it back. OBJ, that's totally cool that you like that, bro. <laughs> Well, Tim, um, dude, this has been an awesome chat. I'm glad we could get yeah, you in here. Definitely. It's awesome. Hope you like the studio. Yeah, no, it's, be- it it's beautiful sure. in here. Thanks, dude. Forgot to even mention ah, it's good. really nice. Yeah. It's really dude, nice in here. So many. This has been like stout week, which makes sense because we've had a lot of stout guys in here. But on the fights, what's it like fighting with so many of your teammates? Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to feel like another Saturday. <laughs> like, Hell yeah. Because, you know, we get a crack yeah. in the Saturday afternoons. Right. Like, I'm getting so excited thinking about it now. Um yeah, it's just gonna be like another Saturday, you know, us in the back, uh, in the uh, red corner, warming up, warming up with each other, and we're just gonna go out there and, uh, but it's for real this time. Yeah, you know, we're gonna be thrown with intent. We're yeah. gonna have punches and kicks thrown at us with intent, and you know, at the end of the day, it's just you out there. You know, it can almost feel lonely, but like just knowing that because of those guys backstage, you're ready to be. Hell you yeah. know, in the in that cage right right then in that moment. I love that. Yeah. So Tim fights, everybody watching, listening. A super dangerous striker, Cam Smith. It's gonna be a banger. Get your tickets, 247fighting.com. Choose Tim's name yeah. at checkout. Yeah. Oh, you, oh. <laughs> I was just cutting I, a promo, but he's like, uh, that's a handshake. Right, I, I know a handshake when I see one. <laughs> Choose Tim's name so he gets paid and can buy tickets the next time the Cowboys come to town or the Steelers go to Dallas. So he can make that happen. Nice either way. <laughs> yeah, or get the pay-per-view, stream247live.com, get the app, it's on Roku, iOS, which means iPad and iPhone, or Apple TV, watch him, watch Tim, support local MMA. Thanks for coming in, brother. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank yeah. you. There we this go. is a real handshake. A real handshake. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was great, man. That was so awkward. <laughs>